In this video, I'm going to give some of my top predictions for the crypto space in 2021. You know, where I think this technology is headed and how it can impact the price of cryptocurrency. So a lot of these predictions are going to be focused around Ethereum because those of you who are new, there's a lot of newcomers in this space. That's what my specialty is. I'm a blockchain developer who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis. And one of those reasons is because, uh, you know, most of the meaningful innovation happening in blockchain technology right now is on top of the Ethereum platform. So I'm also an Ethereum investor because I believe in Ether as an asset itself for lots of reasons which will be clear in this video. And so I want to make some predictions about what I think is going to happen in this particular space over this coming year. And I'll also talk about what I think is going to happen with the price of Ether at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around to watch the whole thing and find out. All right. So before we jump into all that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right. And last but not least, before we get started, as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy Ether, right? You have to do that own research and decide for yourself. But these are some things that I think are probably going to happen in 2021. So the first big prediction I have for Ethereum in 2021 is that it's going to scale. And I think this is one of the most important things that's going to impact the price of Ether itself, because a lot of people, when they get into the Ethereum space, they say, oh, Ethereum's awesome. There's all these apps built on top of it, but it's really slow and it's really expensive. And for those two reasons, like it's never going to work. So I don't think a lot of newcomers realize that Ethereum is going to scale like really soon, like really, really soon. OK, like maybe even in a matter of weeks. And so how is it going to do this? Well, it's going to do it with something called layer two technology. So what does that mean? Well, you can think about blockchain technology like having multiple layers, all right? There's the actual layer one, which is the blockchain itself. That's the Ethereum blockchain that most people use directly. So like if you go to a, an app like Uniswap, for example, right now, and you interact with it at the time of recording this video, you know, you're just interacting with the base chain, you know, ETH Ethereum itself. That's layer one. But a second layer can be added on top of that. That's going to be layer two, where you can do things that you don't need to use the entire blockchain for that will make it faster and cheaper to use. So one of the reasons this has taken so long to implement is because because it's a hard problem to solve, okay? So you have to find a solution that is secure enough for other people to use it to transfer large amounts of money around and also something that can be standardized across multiple protocols because what you really want is for all the big DeFi apps in the Ethereum ecosystem to start using the same thing so that users can like seamlessly jump between one app to the other without switching paradigms, okay? So we already have layer two scaling solutions right now implemented in a few different apps, but I think really soon we're going to see a few major apps come out with layer two scaling solutions that work amazingly well in their applications in such a way that other apps can just basically basically do the same thing that everybody's using the same strategy. And it's just going to be a win across the entire board for all those apps and everyone in the Ethereum ecosystem right now. And so scaling is going to be a major deal uh, for lots of reasons. Number one, we don't have to wait for all of Ethereum 2.0 to roll out before the Ethereum network can scale. And that's going to be a huge vote of confidence for Ethereum technology because more end users are going to be willing to use it. More people are going to be willing to implement it as a business solution. And it's going to be a massive vote of confidence for people who want to invest in the technology itself by buying Ether. So the next big prediction that I have is that EIP 1559 is going to go live. And so like you might be watching this video and say, what the heck does that even mean? So let me just break it down, clarify it for you, because this is a really important thing to understand. OK, so EIP just stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. So really, this is just a document that gets submitted to all the you know decision makers in the Ethereum ecosystem out there um, that says, hey, we want to change Ethereum in some way, the actual protocol itself. And uh, you know, this is something that essentially has to get voted in and included in the protocol. It goes through all this like ceremony before it can go live. And what it does is it burns Ether any time a transaction is submitted. So uh, what does that even mean? Like, how does that affect Ethereum? Why is that bullish for the technology and the price? Well, essentially, think about it this way. If I send Ether to you, I'm making a transaction. So if I send you one Ether, um, then I send that to you and I pay a small fee, okay? So one Ether plus like, you know, maybe 0 0.00001 Ether, something like that, right? And so that fee right now is part of how Ethereum miners get paid. So right now, Ethereum works uh, with proof of work. It's, it's a mining blockchain. It has miners. And whenever that transaction is created, you know, new Ether is mine, but I also pay a fee to send to Ether. So what EIP 1559 does is part of that fee that I pay gets burnt. All right. It just doesn't go to the miners. It just disappears, basically. And so you can think about it like a network fee. So basically, everybody who holds Ether now, uh, whenever, you know, I pay a fee and use the network, part of 
part of Ether just disappears. And so that's bullish for lots of reasons, but two main reasons. So first, it reduces the rate that new Ether is created, which has an impact on supply. So right now, while Ethereum is, you know, proof of work, new Ether is mined, but if some of that Ether is burned, then it it's a lower net production of Ether, which makes Ether more scarce and ultimately more valuable as more people try to buy it. The second thing is it also reduces some of the sell pressure on Ether itself because there's less Ether for miners to just dump on exchanges and cash out on. So basically, if there's less Ether in existence or the ETH production slows down and there's less miners selling Ethereum, then just by basic supply and demand economics, this will have an impact on price, assuming people continue to demand Ethereum over the next year. So my next big prediction is that Ethereum 2.0 phase one will go live in 2021. All right. So what does that mean? Well, if you're using Ethereum right now, if you're using a dApp like Uniswap, for example, or you're just moving Ether around, uh, buying cryptocurrency, buying tokens, then you're using Ethereum version 1.0. All right. So we are in the middle of a transition to the new and improved version of Ethereum, Ethereum 2.0. That's going to be a lot faster, a lot more scalable. And right now we're in phase zero. So, so last year in 2020, I predicted that Ethereum 2.0 phase zero would go live in 2020. So it looks like that prediction came true. And this year I predict that fate, we're going to exit that phase and go into phase one as a part of this multi-phase rollout. All right. So it, it also like you can't just flip a switch, turn on Ethereum 2.0. It has to roll out multiple phases. You basically have to do, you know, one thing, make sure it works, get it, get everything secure move to the next phase, move to the next phase. So right now we're in phase zero, which is the beacon chain, which basically has made Ethereum staking live. So you can send your ETH to Ethereum 2.0 uh, to start staking it. You can't get it back right now until we exit phase zero. So <laughs> make sure you know that before you try to do that. Um, but once we exit that phase, we go into phase one uh, where we'll have the shard chains, okay? And that's where we're basically gonna break Ethereum up into multiple smaller blockchains, which is gonna be one of the biggest things that improves the performance of Ethereum and make it more scalable, all right? So after that, we'll have uh, the last major phase, which will be phase two, which is state execution, where you can put smart contracts on Ethereum. And that's basically when we complete this migration and dApps can start using uh, Ethereum 2.0 natively. So Ethereum 2.0 going live is incredibly bullish for Ether itself, the asset, and its price appreciation for lots of reasons. I mean, basically, if people are going to stake Ether to run the blockchain, then that's reducing the circulating supply of Ether. There's less incentive to sell it. So that makes Ether more scarce. And once Ethereum completes its migration to Ethereum 2.0, then the network itself just has way more utility than it did before, which just means there's more incentive for businesses to use it, for end users to use it. And if you're going to use, you know, Ethereum at all, you have to hold Ether to pay for gas fees, which is going to increase the demand for Ether itself. And also cryptocurrency markets trade a lot on sentiment, right? I mean, just the fact that Ethereum 2.0 is launching, that it's shipping is incredibly bullish for the price. So my next big prediction is that we're going to see $100 billion locked into DeFi. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, I mean, that doesn't seem that crazy because I was making videos about this before we even crossed a billion dollars locked into DeFi. So if you're, if you're totally new and you don't even know what DeFi is, basically this is decentralized finance or DeFi for short. It's basically taking uh, you know traditional financial products and creating new ones and also moving them to the blockchain. Okay, so a lot of these are are fool, fueled by people. Uh, parking assets into DeFi protocols, all right, to get some sort of utility value out of that. At the time of recording this video, it's, it's a little over $20 billion. So my prediction in 2020 is that we're going to cross $100 billion. And honestly, I think that's a conservative estimate on the grand scheme of things. Like we could, we could seriously outperform that. Now, as always, nobody's got a crystal ball. Uh, but this is an estimate that I feel relatively confident. I mean, if you look back in November, we were just at $10 billion. And, uh, you know, here in January, we've already doubled that. And another reason this is not that crazy is because you don't need that many new DeFi users to make this a reality. Okay, so basically a lot of these assets that are staked right now are cryptocurrencies that appreciate in price. And if all those, you know, just 5x in value, then we could reach $100 billion. Now, no, that's not totally accurate because, you know, there's a lot of stable coins locked into DeFi and the price of those don't change. Uh, but I mean, some of these things are, are DeFi tokens that have a really high upside because they're so low market cap and they could absolutely explode in price and really move the needle on this. Okay. So that's my conservative prediction is that we're going to cross a hundred billion dollars in 2021. I mean, um, realistically, we could go a lot higher than that sheerly based on what could happen with cryptocurrency prices this year. All right, so my last prediction is actually about the price of Ether versus Bitcoin. Okay, and then what I think is going to happen in 2021. So 
As always, this is not financial advice, but I think in 2021 that Ethereum is going to outperform Bitcoin in terms of percentage gain. So if you bought Ether basically at midnight on January 1st, 2021 and sold it at 11.59 on December 31st, 2021, then you would get a higher percentage return than if you'd done it with the exact same amount in Bitcoin. Now, full disclosure on this prediction. I've put this last for a few reasons, but one of them is that uh, I'm... I'm more confident about the other things I've talked about in this video than I am about this. That being said, my personal portfolio reflects this conviction because I do hold Bitcoin, I do hold Ether both for the long term. But at this point, I think my portfolio is about 80% Ether. So my personal conviction is that Ether is going to do better than Bitcoin in this cycle and also for the long term for lots of reasons. One, it has a ton of promise and it's a lower market cap. So you can get a much higher ROI if the market cap goes up. It Basically, it's easier to move the needle on a cheaper asset than it is a more expensive asset in terms of market cap. And so essentially, like I think Ether has as much promise, if not more promise than Bitcoin as a technology itself. And its market cap is much lower than Bitcoin at the time of recording this video. And for those reasons, I think it's just going to outperform. All right. So I now, I know it's not an official prediction on the price of Ether this year. If you all want me to make a video about that, make sure you leave a comment down in the comment section below. Um, so that's all I've got for today. You know, as always, uh, it's not financial advice, but I hope you like this video. You know, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain, learn about the potential of this exciting new technology, particularly with Ethereum, right? Again, because that's what my specialty is. I'm a blockchain developer. I work with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis, all right? So if you're new around here, or maybe you've been watching the channel for a while, and you're as fascinated about this technology as I am, then how can you get your hands dirty and get started today uh, you know, jump on this big, massive opportunity to become a blockchain developer in 2021. Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. All right. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely and just start today, like just like going for the throat, mastering blockchain step by step from start to finish so you can get ahead of this big trend that's going on right now. Um then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I can show you how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish. You know, I've helped people with zero programming experience become real world blockchain developers. Um, and I can help you too. So you can land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own project. Uh, just check the link out down below to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.